abdominal clinical examination. Anterior abdominal wall dilated veins. Venous drainage of the anterior abdominal wall. This is the anterior abdominal wall. It is divided into an upper half and the lower half by an imaginary plane at the level of the umbilical. This is the superior epigastric vein. That is the lateral thoracic vein. And this is the axillary vein. All of them drain finally into the superior vena cava. This is the inferior epigastric vein, that is the superficial epigastric vein. This is the great saphenous vein, and all of them drain finally into the inferior vena cava. The veins of the anterior abdominal wall in normal persons are not dilated. Dilatation of the anterior abdominal wall veins is always pathological. The vein milking test for detection of the direction of the venous blood flow. The milking test. This is a photograph of a dilated vein we milk by the fingers, as will be described now. We select a segment of a vein having no sided branching. We press by the pads of the terminal phalanx of the right and left index fingers at the center of the selected venous segment. The two pads of the two index fingers are put side by side over the center of the selected venous segment. We move the pads of the two pressing fingers away from each other over the vein wall to milk the blood from the segment, to empty the segment from its blood. We release the pressure of one finger and notice the rate of blood spilling to the venous segment. We repeat the milking and notice the rate of blood flow after release of the pressure by the other finger. The direction of the blood flow starts from the side of the faster filling rate towards the side of the slower filling rate. The hemodynamics of the venous blood flow in the anterior abdominal wall. This is the abdominal wall. Anterior abdominal wall is divided by a plane, upper part and lower part. The plane is at the level of the umbilicus. Normally, above the umbilicus, the blood is drained upward. And mainly through the right and left superior epigastric vein. 
to reach finally the superior vena cava. This is the anterior abdominal wall. A plane divides the anterior abdominal wall into a, an upper half and a lower half. That plane is through the level of the umbilical. Normally, below the umbilicus, the blood is drained downward. mainly through the right and left inferior pigastric vein to reach finally the inferior vena cava. With superior vena cava obstruction, the blood flow above the umbilicus is reversed to be from up downward. Downward. Reverse the direction. This is abnormal direction. The red arrow points to that. And below the umbilicus, the flow is normally downward. The green, the right, the red, the reverse. To reach the inferior vena cava. Both of the upper and lower halves are drained to the inferior vena cava. When the blood flows from upward to downward, above and below the umbilicus, part of it is reversed, red and part of it green normal direction. This means that there is superior vena cava obstruction. The blood flows away from the obstructed side, the upper part, towards the patent side, the lower part. A patient having superior vena cava obstruction Showing dilated veins in the neck and face, congested face, and dilated veins on the uh, chest wall and upper arm. Uh, this is a typical picture of superior vena cava obstruction. Superior vena cava obstruction dilated neck and upper chest wall veins. Superior dilated abdominal and chest veins in a patient having superior vena cava obstruction. And the direction of flow is from up down because the upward direction is obstructed by the obstruction of the superior vena cava. It will be reversed downward to be drained into the inferior vena cava. Superior vena cava obstruction, dilated chest and, and abdominal wall vein. With inferior vena cava obstruction, the blood flow below the umbilicus is reversed to be upward instead of going downward. Red arrow. And above the umbilicus, the flow is normally upward. Green arrow, normal direction. Red arrow, reverses direction. To reach, finally, the superior vena cava. In inferior, patients with inferior vena cava, the blood is drained below the umbilicus and above the umbilicus from down up. To be, drained, to be drained finally into the superior vena cava. When the blood flows from downwards to upward, above and below the umbilicus, this part of the flow is 
normal direction, the green above the umbilicus, and the other part below the umbilicus is the reverse direction, red signal and green signal. This means that there is inferior vena cava with structure. The blood flows away from the obstructed site toward the patient site. These are patients, photographic patients having inferior vena cava obstruction. Inferior vena cava obstruction, dilated abdominal vein. More in the lower part. In patients having portosystemic anastomosis, caput medusae, or portal hypertension, there are dilated abdominal veins also with normal direction of blood flow above and below the umbilicus. Above the umbilicus, the blood is drained upwards, and below the umbilicus, the blood is drained downwards. Two green arrows in normal direction, but there are dilated veins. These are patients having portal hypertension, portosystemic anastomosis. Portosystemic anastomosis, caput medusae, dilated abdominal wall veins, more around the umbilicus. In superior vena cava, the obstruction, the dilated veins are more upward in chest wall and neck also, in addition to abdominal veins. In inferior vena cava obstruction, the dilated abdominal, anterior abdominal wall veins are more downward in the lower half. And in portal hypertension, the veins are with normal direction, no reversion of the direction of blood flow, but the dilatation of the veins are around the umbilicus with normal direction of blood flow, no reversion of direction. Finally, I have the pleasure to invite you to subscribe to my channel and visit it to view and select what you need. This is the link of my channel. Good luck and best wishes.